Oh, and by the way, I know you've just thought my partner totally doesn't have the same manual as I do, because we're never on the same page when it comes to money. Again, you're 99.9% .9 right. They don't, and you assumed that they did. And guess what? I bet you've never actually shared each other's. And every argument over money is always about the same thing, and you don't understand why they don't get it, and they think that you're just being a stubborn jackass. You're listening to the Unshackle Your Life podcast with Debbie Colburn, the place to break through all of the hidden things that hold each of us back. Things that scare us and things that challenge us and things we're just plain fed up with. We talk all things money and business, big and small. We dive deep. We get real and we get raw. Discovering and exploring what is really possible for you. It's a restart. If you've ever struggled with shame, worry, or just plain self-doubt, if you've ever thought it's not enough when you looked at your bank account or your credit card. If you're sick and tired of living a cycle of crisis to crisis to crisis, no matter whether it's in your personal life, in your business, or your relationships, then this is where you need to be. We'll bring you new ideas, tips, and tactics, and connect you to the resources to get you unlocking your own shackles and release your unique abilities. No matter what's going on in your life right now, maybe you're in survival mode, just barely getting by, living day-to-day, paycheck-to-paycheck. Maybe you're in a job or a career or running a business that is leaving you on empty, depleted, uninspired, or anything in between. I've got your back. Ready? So buckle on up, take a deep breath, and join me in a conversation about jump-starting your life and breaking free of your shackles and create that thing that you've been scared to ask for. Welcome to episode 97. Our world is governed by rules. We all know that. Speeding tickets, bank service charges, not eating with your hands, except, well, let's say if you're from one of the countries in Southeast Asia where that is the culture, all of us remember being told to, as a kid, follow the rules. And few of us would argue that there were times in our past where following those rules have actually saved our lives. Like stop at red lights, no open flame near gas, no robbing a bank. Yet, did you know that every judgment you make about someone, every little inkling of stress you feel as a result of the actions of someone else is driven by a conflict with your internal rule book driven by the belief that somehow, if only they would behave in the way I expect them to, like any reasonable person would, I would be happier. Surely I'm not being unreasonable. Or am I? I did not know on any of that until just recently. I just knew that it really friggin' pissed me off when people were what I called disrespectful. I think, that person doesn't give a shit about others. They're clueless about how what they did has affecting, affected others. And I get all friggin' wound up, obsess about it, tell people about what happened. I, I could literally feel it festering inside my body. And I know I am not alone here. The reason I do these podcasts is to help people unleash their potential because I understand how much this kind of thing blocks potential, holds us back, makes us our biggest roadblock. And hopefully these help you get out of your own damn way. And I bet you know what I mean. For every person, every group of people, and for money, we have a very specific personal manual. Yes, for money too. And we're going to talk directly to that shortly. So buckle up and hang on tight. Just think about what you think and say about each different generation. 
And it might be something like this. And I don't know what generation you're in. You could be Boomer. You could be Gen X, Gen Y. You could be any one of the four or five that are, that are out there. So the Boomers, gag me with a spoon. They are the me generation, the workaholics, flaunting the fact that they work 16 hours a day as some weird badge of honor. Greedy, materialistic, and ambitious, and yep, divorced. Because those long days were more important than us kids. They're living the American dream. I'll never get, get that. That was me to a T. Poor Gen X, the lost generation, the latchkey kids left to fend for themselves at home alone while we work. The boomers work. The kids of the single parents and dual income families wanting for nothing, yet deeply cynical about the future, screaming, what's in it for me? And both my kids are Gen X, and this is a perfect description. Down the alphabet, Gen Y, the millennials, the children of divorce, trying to find their place. Helicopter parents trying to protect them, cutting their wings off. Wings that previous generations fertilized and nourished. They're the generation trying to right the world's wrongs. Want to have their say in everything, yet live sheltered lives. Not being allowed to fail and without the full life experience. And Gen Z, well... Stay tuned. I'm avidly following my four grandkids. These are my words and words of others on the internet and people that I've met. And my heart, really, as I was writing this, my heart really hurts for every generation. It's easy to blame a generation for your reaction to something. But what if the truth is that our manuals, our pers personal set of rules, are applicable only to us. They do not apply to anyone else on the planet, no matter how much we believe that they should. Why? Because you cannot control other people. You cannot make them act in a specific way. And most importantly, the only person who can make you happy, fill your needs, is you. Only you, living a full and a rich life, a life full of experiences, a deep human experience. Well, what if our manuals could be rewritten, revised, as we learn more about ourselves and about others? Now, I'm not saying that every rule in there should be changed. What I am saying is that there is a different way to look at each of your manuals, to craft it in a way that supports your vision where are you going, what you want to impact in the world, the future, and to make you happy. This question, how is that serving you, is a magical question. It's super easy, and I've learned to ask it when I find something is bothering me. Like dog pee. Yes, dog pee. It is, is it a safety issue? or health and, well, health and well-being issue for more than just me, for those around me. Every day, I'd walk out of the front door of our brand new high-rise, and there would be dog pee right on the sidewalk, on the walls, on the door frames, everywhere. So much that all you sm smelt, what do you have to do, smelt when you were entering the building was dog pee. That's an issue. That's a safety and health and well-being issue. And it 100% violated my manual. For, well, let's just say responsible dog ownership. And if you've ever gone onto the, the discussion boards and so on to find out what responsible dog ownership is, you will find that there are a thousand plus different phrases that people use and most people don't think of it the same way. My training facility had 200 plus dogs a day in it and we didn't have that issue because my clients and my renters knew my manual and they knew the consequences. And the most important piece, I didn't tie my happiness to whether they did or didn't do it. It was simply, that's the rules. Do it, participate and use the facility, don't do it, don't use the facility. Pretty simple.
It wasn't, I'm a bad owner, a bad business owner. I'm a bitch. I'm a, like, nobody loves me. None of that stuff. And that's the problem with manuals. And when we try and apply it to other people. In everything, there are always at least three choices. But I want to try and keep it simple for you. You can address it head on. You can ignore it, make no changes, and get on with life. Or you can address it and walk away from the situation that only you can control your emotions, your how you feel. And that starts with your thinking. Because as you guys all know, you've got your circumstance, you've got the fact, you've got how you, what are you, what is the thought that's happening right now? What is, what, how does that make you feel? And then there's action and then there's results. Nobody else can control that for you. So with that, let's talk about your money manual. In particular, that section on spending. Because you guys know, right? There's, there, it's different skill sets. There's the, the skill set of earning money. There's the skill set of spending money. There's the skill set of saving money and, and saving and investing. But effectively, there's three different skill sets. So with that, I bet you're already thinking, damn, I've got someone else's manual. Because uh, this one, it just isn't working for me. Yep, you probably got your parents' manual with an addendum written by a partner, or maybe a sibling, maybe a grandparent. So let's get working on yours. And we can then consult with your partner and your kids to fine tune it so it shines like a full moon on a still lake at midnight. Doesn't that sound amazing? Oh, and by the way, I know you've just thought my partner to totally doesn't have the same manual as I do, because we've never been on the same page when it comes to money, again, you're 99.9% .9 right. They don't. And you assume that they did. And guess what? I bet you've never actually shared each other's manuals, and every argument over money is always about the same thing, and you don't understand why they don't get it, and they think you're just being a stubborn jackass. The concept of mindful spending is a set of rules, a set of spending protocols that must support you and your well-being. And it's for you. You have one, your partner has one, and then you have a shared one. But we start first with yours. Whether your partner ever gets one, that's one thing, but you got it, you must have yours. And when you have a mindful spending practice in place, you will discover that you do not feel strangled in the present. You are not living in an all or nothing state, which is painful. It's as painful with money as it is with diets, where you, you, you either gotta go all in on this new diet, God forbid, or you don't. You gotta go all in seven days a week every meal, or you don't. It, that's painful. It's too aggressive. And same with money. You're depriving yourself of any hope of enjoyment and peace in the present moment or until. You are not trying to do something that is ultimately unsustainable over the long term. That is why budgets don't work. Because they are all or nothing. There is no leeway. There's no compassion. There's no forgiveness. It's just beat yourself up, beat yourself up, beat yourself, and deprive yourself of any enjoyment in the present. You will not be creating a high level of damage to your own person and to your relationships. Imagine putting yourself on such a strict budget or your business on such a strict budget you know, with not allowing yourself to do things. What would happen to your friendships if you couldn't allow yourself the opportunity to even go out once a month with friends? You wouldn't have any damn friends left, right? 
When you have a mindful spending practice in place, you will find you are no longer triggered when you hear, not these exact words, but this, this is the, the intent of someone saying a sentence. There's something wrong with you if you don't have the newest thing, whatever the thing or things are. iPhone 13 Pro, anyone? Yeah, uh, Eco-shaming. That trigger will no longer exist for you simply because you've identified the things that are most important to you and those that you don't give a rat's ass about. A mindful spending practice has only two pieces to it. First, the things that enhance your life, that you love, that give you a charge, that relax you, that you're passionate about, that are the things that will move you closer to your potential and to your rich life. The things that move you enough to want to pay for without giving it a second thought. And it doesn't matter what the cost of those things are. And the second, the things that are not in the first, that you are willing to be cutthroat with, ruthless, to keep them as that cost as low as humanly possible. Now, this doesn't have to be forever, but I can tell you it might be. Who knows? The hard part of this is step one, figuring out what goes into bucket one and what goes into bucket two. So let me give you an example, which I'm pretty sure at least one or two of them I've, I've shared in other episodes along the way. Bucket one, the love bucket, driving. It's my most, one of my most relaxing places. I simply love driving. And I love the sports car. So a car is in there. The one that makes my heart sing. And no, it's not a Porsche Panamera or a Maserati or... In bucket two, is anything cell phone or internet related. I absolutely abhor the cell phone companies and the monopoly on the public, especially here in Canada, the highest rates in the world, controlled by two companies, and I am ruthless on keeping my costs as low as humanly possible. Bucket one, my outdoor sports equipment. If it's the thing I want, and it ticks all, all the needs and functionality boxes, it's mine. Bucket two, banks. Again, and this is 100% in line with my vision of eradication of the scarcity mindset in future generations. I am passionate about changing how the poorest of the world are preyed on with bank charges and fees that are the highest for the people with the least. Bucket one, personal development anything, workshops, seminars, live events, books, videos, any of that. Bucket two, toilet paper. Yep, it just goes down the toilet. Why in the hell would I spend two and three times, you know, something else just to get paper that is belongs to a, that a family of bears thinks makes their buttholes feel awesome? Do you remember back to the early days of the pandemic and the hoarding days of toilet paper? I wasn't one of them. I am just as happy using the Asian waterway. Yeah, okay, you get the idea. Now maybe it's, you know, so maybe you're back at one. Maybe it's dinner out. Maybe it's two dinners out a week. Or maybe it's only just once a year. Maybe it's a day hike in the most beautiful location with a couple of bottles of Perrier and some fine Swiss cheese and Mary's organic crackers. Or maybe it's a, it's a bottle of the best red wine and a bag of Ruffles chips. Maybe it's an extra large double-double, a 12-grain bagel with freshly smashed avocado every morning for every area of your life. What are the first bucket items and what are the second bucket items? Now each week, you guys know, as I do these podcasts, I hope you're thinking about these exercises and doing them. Because thinking doesn't get you anywhere, doing them does. And it was through doing these and a strategic plan and a bit of trial and error 
that I've been able to create my Breakthrough Navigator programs that I hope you guys are going to join me someday inside. That work. That's obviously just step one. Smart people, you under, you get that. And to create a plan that addresses the other key pieces, we do all of that inside our programs. And I'd love to have you come and spend 90 days with me and create your own breakthrough, whether it's money, whether it's business, or both. I'm here to answer any questions you have or to help you join, which you can get to simply by clicking the link debbiecolburn.com forward slash breakthrough. And that link is also in the show notes. It's pretty much everywhere. And there's a lot here. And my wish for you is that you take away something that today you will encourage yourself to take the next step, to start building a bias for action into your daily life. You already know that your thinking is what drives everything. So we've created a new daily affirmation. Don't get hung up on affirmation. Call it an intention. Call it a phrase. Call it a mantra. Call it a a couple of sentences sent to you every day for 90 days so that you can unlock every day with intention. So you can just sign up for that. It's free at debbiecolburn.com forward slash unlock the day. They're amazing. i got to say they're amazing. I actually signed up for it myself so that I would get one sent to me every day because I'm in love with them. And I I love, they, they totally changed my day, and I need those reminders. So we're here. We're at the end. Time for that question that I ask everyone at the end of each episode. What is the best thing that could happen to you if you unlock just one thing? in your life today. Hey, if this podcast got you thinking you're ready to change your money or business situation, please make sure you're subscribed and share it with everyone you think needs to hear this. The link is in the show notes and drop a review in wherever you're listening. And make sure you drop over to our website, debbiecolburn.com forward slash links to get your very own personal affirmations, mantras, and positive intentions in your inbox every single day for 90 days, absolutely free. I actually get them sent to myself. They are so amazing. And they work for both your personal life and your business. And if you haven't already checked it out, the all new Breakthrough Navigator Money and Business Editions. And please make sure you're connected with us on LinkedIn and Instagram which is a slightly different name at Miss MS Debbie Colburn and sharing what your biggest obstacle is so that we can help you break through. 